Um, uh, okay, you 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 said all along that the regatta at the Olympics was very similar to the regattas that you usually have. You know, same routine in your hotel and so on. But I mean, what was different? A about Bay or about Tokyo, and B, what was different between say Tokyo and Rio, Paul? Since you're at both, just to get things going. Um, yeah, well, I suppose um, I know it is like fundamentally it is all very similar, um, and uh, like you're just it is it is very just like a rowing event because I suppose well you know all the rowers anyway, so they're just kind of faces you recognise and. We all kind of end up on the early, early schedules because all the racing's done early in the morning anyway. Um, yeah. Just kind of seeing the same people getting in on the bus with them and and stuff and down at the course. And I think everyone really liked the course down there. It was just really cool because out the bay there in Tokyo and it's like kind of damned off you're rowing in like seawater and then there's like kind of it looks like there's a forest then up the side and then there's like big tall buildings and stuff then so you know if you're in the ocean or in the, the forest or the city or what's going on and they've got the salt water then as well so um i think that kind of adds a little bit to the speed so that probably probably helped us out then in, in setting some class times and stuff but um i think it was it was kind of similar then to to, to rio as well because that's uh that was right next to the coca Cabana Beach or whatever they call it, and uh, Joe, there was big mountains and stuff, and then all the the big buildings of the city then around it, and there was salt water as well, like so. Um, it was pretty similar, yeah, and uh, good good experience on on both accounts. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if somebody else wants to go, I, I don't want to hug it here. Well, nice. Con congratulations. Great to see you. Well done. Um, just, Paul, we were speaking, obviously, before Tokyo, we're talking about what winning means to you and what winning gold means to you. And obviously, winning Olympic gold is the, the pinnacle, it's the top. So I want to know, did you feel the difference winning this gold compared to what you have won before? And if there is a difference, what is that difference? Um, I can't say I've noticed the difference, to be honest. Um, but anyway, I've not thought hugely about it, like... I don't know if there's much to think about it. Like, it's kind of good, like, uh, I suppose it's good in a way to confirm like that. I suppose we're always trying to, I suppose, be the best that we can, can be, like, and, and, you know, I think it's only a guess, really, that or, or hope that we, we kind of beat everyone else. But I suppose it's nice to confirm that, like, you know, we'd, we'd be sitting down with Dominic and just thinking about training plans and, how to change this and that and looking at technique and some biomechanics and doing testing in the lab and just kind of always constantly adjusting stuff and I suppose then to kind of go out there and actually do the test then to see if it's it's kind of good enough and, and to do what you, you hope that you could do is kind of it's just it gives you a nice confirmation then like um that that you you you've done a good job and, and seems to be on the right track. Can I ask you about Dominic Casey in this? Just obviously his role, he's had a huge influence. Like he's obviously your coach. So his role in this. And what did Dominic say to you before the final and his words to you straight after? Oh, geez, I can't really remember this stage. I think um, just the usual. Like he doesn't like to give us a big pep talk or anything. Just a few words like keep it clean, stuff like that. Like there's no big... Um, you know, there's not a big drama before the race. It's just another race, really. Um, and then after, I didn't see him for a while because I was going to, I got called in for anti-doping. But I assume, I don't know, was it something along the lines of get the boat de or something? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> get, get the boat de as quick as possible before we go anywhere else. <laughs> Nice. Uh, sorry, this is Emmett Bowen from the Irish Examiner USA. Guys, I've got to say congratulations. It's amazing watching this. As an Irish person here in Japan, you've inspired everyone. So thank you very much for that, especially during this very difficult time. If I may ask, have you any advice for the young Irish coming up uh, with Olympic dreams of gold? Um, I think, yeah, you know, you have to have, um, I suppose, your strong belief that... Uh, Really, it is it is possible, and I think Joe, we've seen that that um, after the last time, kind of a lot of people really realised Joe there's nothing special about us, and 
like a lot of a lot of hard work can get you there. And we saw it then, like that the women's sport took took a bronze medal and just our biggest team ever there. Um, it's absolutely everything is possible. I think you have to have like you have to be quite strategic about it as well. So I suppose kind of lay out your plan and and your timeline and have a lot of intermediate goals and just ways of measuring your your uh, your performance increments along the way to see if you're getting better and and I suppose try out a lot of things like uh, and see what what is and isn't working and listen to a lot of people and then you just gotta gotta filter it yourself and and see see yourself what's making you better and um, I think just keep keep going down that way and it's it's just a constant kind of learning experience really and, and a bit of an experiment and uh, but like this so yeah you have to be measuring things then uh, in some way to to get some accurate feedback as, as to how things are going and, and adjust accordingly but it should be and that that in itself then can can be kind of a, a fun experience and if you if you kind of the more people around you surround yourself with good people is uh always helps too definitely definitely what about yourself finn any advice yeah you know i'd agree completely with paul i think we don't get many opportunities to race so most of what we do is training so you really do need to like enjoy the training and enjoy the journey i think as well like it does take time so just to not be any in any hurry to you know be doing amazing things straight away just keep chipping away and um, enjoy the journey really yeah beautiful thank you very much fellas and congratulations and especially being an inspiration during the world's difficult time, thank you very much and congratulations. Thank you. Hi, lads. Uh, John Crumb here from the Irish Examiner in Cork. Uh, well, Ireland. And um, congratulations also as well. I was just wondering, Fintan, maybe, in, you know, there's been a lot made, a, a clip going around of you in the documentary uh, about the two uh, about in the aftermath of the Rio um, Olympics, uh, you know, down, down in Skip. And in terms of, you know, enjoying the journey, I, I was wondering, have you had any chance maybe to process what it was like watching Paul and Gary, when they came on the last winter medal, and you being in in, in in that you know place at the moment, and what that means, and how or have you had any time to really kind of contemplate that? Um, yeah, you know, I've had a bit of time, I guess, now over the last few days. Um, just feeling pretty like grateful, obviously, that I was kind of a part of it back then, because you know the lads were from our club, so there was huge excitement around the place, and. Um, yeah, it was kind of, it obviously definitely helped get to where I am today because I saw that it was possible and, you know, like it gave me a lot of motivation to just keep going with it. And we were doing similar enough training and stuff, you know, we had the same coach. So it was pretty clear that if, you know, it's a, it's a winning formula really. So, yeah. Thanks. And Paul, could I just ask you a quick question as well? Um, you just always struck me as a, a very grounded man, and I don't think all of your success in the boat is going to define you, that it's, you know, it, it, it's just a small part of your general makeup. And, like, you don't give have any kind of difficulties kind of reverting to real life, I suppose, and studying medicine and all that malarkey as well. Right. What's the question? Sorry. So you, you don't think you'll have any kind of difficulty, you know, like, you know, resetting and readjusting to normal life again now that, you know, it's, you know, one cycle is over, another one begins. Would that be your kind of thought process in terms of your life and everything? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'd be kind of looking forward now to getting back to college. So I've been off for a, a couple of months at this stage. It would be good to kind of catch up with, with all the lads again and, and all that. Like, you get, yeah, yeah. Too, too much of the rowing now is probably, I just get too consumed in it, like, so uh, it's, it's good for me as well to, to, to take a break I think it can give you a bit more longevity then in, in the long run you know so it's good that like I can, can kind of combine the two now whereas if I'd just been kind of rowing full time for the past 10 years like I'd be getting to, to my age now and I'd be like geez John like I can't stay going at this forever because when I do retire I won't have anything to do um, so when you can kind of combine the two as you're going along it, it just means that you don't have to worry a little bit about, about getting older, you know, which is important. And, and both, both of them are quite fun too, so it's, it's a good job. Great, lads. Thanks very much and congratulations again. Guys, we're just going to have to cut that there and we're going to bring in the women's four crew now shortly. Thanks a million. Thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, guys.